The luxury sports sedan market in the 2020s isn't as desirable or as appealing as it once was. When you have vehicles like the Mercedes-Benz GLC, Audi Q5, and BMW X3, Purchasing a sedan just doesn't make sense because it's not as practical or as family friendly. But it goes one step beyond that, where the Germans are giving their SUVs, which have a higher center of gravity, driving and handling characteristics that mimic a sedan. So it almost seems as though the cars are becoming obsolete. But Audi is one of very few brands that gives you a great alternative, but in my mind, a fantastic value proposition with the Audi A5 Sportback. Now this car does have one rival, which is the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe. But in this video, we're gonna find out that the Audi A5 Sportback might be the better choice. But also, if you are looking at buying a sedan right now in the 2020s, the A5 Sportback might be the best choice you have on the market. Now, before we get in this video, I'll well, thank Audi Natick in Natick, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Audi inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Starting in the 2010s, the styling and designs for sedans began to take a different shape as consumers demanded practicality, larger trunk space, and feeling as though they're getting their money's worth for a commuter vehicle. To counterbalance the exponential growth of the crossover market and weakening interest in cars, manufacturers started shifting towards sportbacks and grand coupes, which took the same cosmetic elements from two-door sports cars, but extended the silhouette and added two additional doors to create a sensible yet dynamic alternative to an SUV. The Audi A5 Sportback was part of this new wave of sedans to compete directly against the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, but to also ensure the survival of the car market, at least in the short term, as a majority of shoppers would rather purchase an Audi Q5. Starting off with pricing, the Audi A5 Sportback we have today is a premium plus which for the 2024 model will come in at just under $52,000, not including any additional packages and features. The reason why the Sportback has this aura and perception of being the ideal sedan in the 2020s goes far beyond what you see on paper or even the improved cargo capacity with a hatchback rear fascia. Underpinning the A5 is Volkswagen Audi's MLB Evo platform, that the closely related A4 also sits on. And with this chassis, the refinement and quality you'll experience when getting behind the wheel or on the roadways is where this car shines the most. While the roofline and sportier body lines makes the A5 Sportback appear to be longer than the A4, believe it or not, exterior dimensions are pretty much identical. And the only difference will be how much luggage you can store in the back. To go along with that Sportback rear fascia, you're also going to receive a power lift gate. And inside, behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 22 cubic feet of room. So you're getting a more practical experience with the A5 Sportback over the A4. The A4 will give you around 12 cubic feet, which is standard for most compact sedans in this market and price range. Now comparing it to its closest rival and really only rival when it comes to a car of this design would be the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, which comes in at around 16 and a half cubic feet of room. So the A5 Sportback is really the better option when you're looking at the practicality aspect. I was able to fit all my camera gear today, no problem. So it's three bags of camera gear, a gimbal box and a tripod. And I still have a little more room for additional equipment as well, which is really great to see because if you are going on a road trip with the family, go with the A5 Sportback over the A4 or other compact sedans in this price range because this car gives you a lot of versatility, which sedans are just not known for these days. Also, of course, if you are somebody who refuses to buy a crossover, the A5 Sportback is your best and really only option right now. Then with the second row seats fold, you're looking at right around 35 cubic feet and that's where you see the limitations of a sedan. So it's not going to be like a Q3 or a Q5. So just keep all of that in mind. You're really just looking at the primary cargo area behind the second row of seats, which really gives this car a lot of value and I think a better buy than that A4. Also back here, you have some cubbies on both sides of the rear cargo area with some netting for some smaller items, such as a couple water bottles, car detail equipment, or maybe even a first aid kit. 
Also, you're gonna have a rear cargo cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything else of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. Also, beneath the floor mat, you are going to have an additional spare tire, so that way if you encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And best of all, all you need to do is just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. So since we are on the topic of dimensions, let's take a look at the second row seating area for the A5 Sportback. Now, a lot of people are going to complain that, oh, you are missing out on some headroom, but actually it's the legroom that's more important that you miss out on with the A5 Sportback. You actually lose around maybe six tenths of an inch, which is a bit more than the headroom that you're missing out on. Now, I still think this is more than practical for a lot of people who are not looking to buy a crossover right now, especially if you have maybe average size adults sitting in the second row or you have smaller children. What I also like too is that when you are comparing this to a BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe, it's more practical, but also more spacious as well. So compared to its closest rival, and really its only rival, if we're gonna take a look at Sportbacks and Grand Coupes, the A5 Sportback is probably the better choice. But for someone at my height around 5'5", I'm more than comfortable. Shoulder room is more than adequate, especially since the A5 Sportback is a compact sedan. Now, of course, you're not gonna be fitting a third person in the center here because with the A5 Sportback, it is more Grand Tour-like, so you get those attributes, you get those characteristics, but I think it is worth paying for, especially when you take a look at the practicality with that cargo area, but also even just the design that the A5 Sportback is offering. Also back here, two rear air vents to go along with climate control. Now we do have empty buttons, which would be for our heated outboard seats. We have two USB inputs, a 12 volt outlet, and then rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with a nice compartment for maybe a smartphone and two cup holders. Captivating and a staple of the B9.5 generation, the A5 Sportback's road presence garners attention, but also respect as it passes you by, which can be seen as a stark difference compared to the large kidney grills found on the BMW 4 Series, that for some is an acquired taste. Distinguishing the A5 Sportback from its A4 sibling, are some minor aesthetic cues, specifically with the body lines that sweep around the front fenders, but also the more dynamic bumper that adds some definition to the front fascia. A welcoming cosmetic element even for the A5, but also seen on the A4, is the honeycomb grille, which in the past was only reserved for Audis wearing the RS badge. Since the black optic package isn't equipped on our model today, Brushed aluminum and chrome accents bring a subtle color contrast, but if you want a lower profile look, paying extra for the gloss black trim would be recommended. A highlight for the 2023 and 2024 model years is the standard matrix design LED headlights, which gives the A5 a modern and futuristic road presence, even with this generation getting up there in age. Moving over to the side profile, we have the optional 19 inch, five-spoke Cavo design wheels with a bicolor finish, but 18s do come standard. What you'll notice with Audis, especially their sedans, when upsizing on the tires, you're not really sacrificing comfort, as the suspension isn't tuned for aggressive driving, even with the A5 Sportback's fluid and firm steering input that may entice you to approach a sharper corner at higher speeds. With this set of wheels, we believe it complements the looks of the A5 more so than the other options available, at least for the Premium Plus. You'll have body color folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along with blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, the Sportback rear fascia with the coupe-like C-pillars is a defining feature for this sedan that ultimately sets it apart from the A4, and it's the final third where the design language differs the most. The muscular rear bumper, subtle deck lid spoiler, and swooping LED taillights bring some aggression to the A5. And while not as visually appealing as what you'll find on the S5, the trapezoidal exhaust outlets finishes off the classy and understated appearance of this car. Under the hood, the A5 is powered by a 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine, producing 261 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque for 45 TFSI models, and 201 horsepower and 236 pound-feet of torque for the base 40 TFSI. 
and both come with the 7-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. While many will feel inclined to pay a premium for the sportier S5 Sportback, as Audi does a better job at balancing performance and luxury than most competitors, it wouldn't be a stretch to suggest that the A5 is more than enough for car shoppers, as the potent powertrain should satisfy drivers with a lead foot. With a 0-60 time of around 5.4 seconds, this sedan is spry and quick to respond, while simultaneously providing an opulent ride quality. Unlike the BMW 4 Series, all-wheel drive does come standard across the board for the A5 Sportback for better year-round versatility. And when it pertains to fuel economy, you'll receive a respectable 24 miles per gallon in the city and 32 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside our model, we have the optional S-Line interior package, adding brushed aluminum inlay to the dashboard and center console, stainless steel pedals, and more importantly, upgrades the leather seats to where they're more supportive with the Dynamica inserts and aggressive bolstering. Standard, these seats are power adjustable and heated, with the driver's side having two position memory. If the S-Line interior package isn't appealing to your tastes, the standard leather seats can also be ventilated as well. Since this is the A5, the cabin is designed primarily for comfort and luxury, even with the S-Line seats. And if a sportier driving environment is what you crave, then make the upgrade to the S5. However, where Audis in general have the most appeal is with the technology you'll be interacting with, especially with Audis virtual cockpit that's both intuitive and interactive. So much so, that we still believe it's the best digital gauge cluster on the market despite the advancements Mercedes-Benz has made in recent years. Then moving over to the infotainment system, you'll have a 10 inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation. This is Audi's latest MMI user interface that offers a clean and responsive layout. While it may not be the most detailed screen in the luxury car market these days, its simplicity makes it a great pairing for a driver who prefers to not get distracted by in-depth touchscreens. Despite the lack of quick access buttons and the removal of the rotary dial that was found on the center console for pre facelifted models, the icons on the screen resemble a touchpad, so it should become second nature to use rather quickly. Helping you park the A5 on city streets, you'll have a variety of camera angles to choose from to ensure you don't get yourself into trouble when backing in and out of tight spots. Beneath the screen, you'll find the dials and buttons for the dual zone climate control, three level heated seats, front and rear defrosters, and AC, which is almost refreshing to see as BMW and Mercedes-Benz have moved these functions to the main head unit to eliminate button clutter. Then as we inch closer to the center console, a single row of buttons, which include the drive mode selector, Auto Start Stop and Park Assist features helps keep everything within arm's reach. You'll have a USB input and 12 volt outlet to go along with a small cubby for loose change. For the center console itself, it's a very clean and minimalist layout with a dial that controls the volume placed on the right. And then for the center storage compartment, you'll have enough room for smaller items. And to round out the front seating area, above will be a power moonroof which will let in some natural light to the interior. Not too bad, not too bad at all. Now, of course, we have 261 horsepower and 273 pound-feet of torque on our model today. And really, I think that's more than enough for most car shoppers. Of course, you can always go with that S5 Sportback or S4, but if you're somebody that's just looking for luxury, this is gonna give you a taste of performance without spending over $60,000. Now, within this market, you're comparing the A5 Sportback to a BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe or maybe even a Mercedes-Benz C300. And when you take a look at the transmissions, each one is different. So with the A5 Sportback, you get the seven-speed dual-clutch automatic. Mercedes-Benz, you get the nine-speed. And with BMW, you get the ZF8-speed. And what I love about the seven-speed dual-clutch is that it isn't clunky 
funky like you would experience in, say, a Volkswagen GTI, which is one of the reasons why a lot of buyers are going to love what the A5 is giving you, because you have an engaging transmission that is going to rival that ZF8 speed, and I think it's not going to be as lazy as the 9-speed and the C300, but it's playful enough and comfortable enough where it's also dailyable and you can live with it on a weekday commute especially even in sport mode as well. I was a bit surprised with how smooth the acceleration was and how linear that power band really is. Also aiding in that performance, and Audi really doesn't do a lot of marketing behind this. They do offer a mild hybrid system for the B9.5 generation for the A4 and A5 Sportback, which I experienced a couple of years ago with that A4, and the accelerations are smoother. You're not going to notice that clunkiness. It's not going to be unrefined. And even though it's not going to be the 48-volt mild hybrid systems that we see from BMW and Mercedes-Benz, it does just enough to give you that smoothness and comfort that you're looking for in this segment. Another noteworthy aspect about this turbocharged four-cylinder engine is that it has a nice sound to it. A lot of four-cylinders have this drone when you are accelerating, and it just doesn't seem all that refined. Whereas with the A4 or A5 Sportback, if you are cross-shopping the two, you're going to love the fact that it has a nice growl, which is typical for a lot of German cars in this market. But also, you're not going to really hear a lot of that engine note enter the cabin when you are on back roads, when you're letting off that accelerator. And a lot of that comes down to the fact that this car is very well insulated. So if you're looking for a car that isolates you from the outside world, you're going to love the cabin of the A5 Sportback, but also the overall driving experience. Ultimately, it's a driving dynamics and on-road demeanor where I feel the A5 Sportback back is the best car in its market and I've driven a lot of sedans at around forty to sixty thousand dollars but I always come back to the Audi A4 and A5 Sportback for a few reasons. Now practicality aside and also the technology you'll be interacting with whether it's the full digital gauge cluster or MMI user interface it's when you're on these twisty and winding back roads that you're going to really enjoy the fluid steering of this car. It's not going to be as weighted as a BMW W 4 Series Grand Coupe or a 3 Series. It's not going to be as agile or as dynamic as an Alfa Romeo Giulia, but as a luxury car, this has it all. A lot of cars in this market don't play the middle that well. You either get a sedan that's too luxurious and opulent, like a Volvo S60, or even a four-cylinder version of the Genesis G70, or you get a vehicle that's all performance all the time, like the Alfa Romeo Giulia. The Audi A5 Sportback is a true German sports sedan, where yes, okay, you have a turbo four, it's not gonna be the V6 like you get with the S5 Sportback, but on a weekly commute or even on a longer drive, you're not gonna be lulled to sleep with this car, especially in dynamic mode, where you are gonna have a car that responds very well. A zero to 60 time of around 5.4 seconds is pretty good, even in 2023, which is why I don't believe you'll be begging for more with this car. It's also why I think that the Audi A4 is still a great sedan as well, if you are somebody who is on the fence. Now, when you are comparing this to other German luxury sports sedans, like the Mercedes-Benz C300 and BMW 330i, the reason why I would come back to the A5 Sportback is because the suspension is tuned very softly, but still gives you the rigidity that you're looking for in a sedan in this price range. Whereas a 330i is going to have a very stiff handling. It's also going to feel almost like a baby M340i. And then the C300 I think is a bit too luxurious, where you, even though the 9-speed has been retuned, it is a bit lazy compared to the seven-speed dual clutch that we have here with the A5 or A4. And I think it's a nicer balance where BMW, of course, is a performance brand. That's what they've always been. And then Mercedes-Benz is all about luxury. Whereas the A5 Sportback and also the A4, these cars really have it all from the standpoint that you have the technology, so you feel as though Audi is more like a tech company in 2023, but you're also getting a driving experience that I think is a bit more fun and well-rounded than what you see from its closest rivals, but also even brands such as Lexus, Genesis, and even Volvo. From a comfort perspective, I would definitely recommend going with the S-Line package like we have today on this model. The dynamic inserts give you a lot of support, but also you're not swaying around 
around when you are on those back roads. Also, the bolstering is pretty aggressive as well for a luxury sedan. So if you are somebody who does drive aggressive and you do encounter back roads quite often, you're gonna prefer these seats over what you get standard on a regular A5 Sportback. What I also like too is that this steering wheel gives you nice firm grips for the 10 and two positions. Also, of course, you have paddle shifters as well, which really aren't that engaging and they're not that big. But if you are somebody who really wants to feel fully connected to the driving experience, I would definitely go with the S-Line package. By opting for that package too, you also get rid of the wood grain trim, which honestly I do like for just a regular A4, A5. So that's gonna be up to you if you prefer this look. However, I do think it's gonna be easier to clean. Then when it comes to overall vision and just the seating positioning as well, I really like where these seats are placed. You can see everything in front of you. The hood doesn't stick out that far, even though this is more designed after the coupe. A-pillars are super thin, so I don't think you'll need to worry about having blind spots when you are approaching intersections. Then when you look at your side mirrors, they are decently sized, they're more aerodynamic, so you might need to take a second look if there is somebody in your blind spots. Then looking out back, of course, with that sport back rear fascia and the headrest, they will take away from some rear visibility, so keep all of that in mind. But one aspect for the interior that has always drawn my attention and has really been something that I've loved about Audis, at least in the modern era, is the technology and just the dashboard layout in general. It's simplistic, but still somewhat old school, which I think a lot of buyers are gonna love because with the new C-Class and also the 330i with the iDrive 8 system, a lot of the buttons have been removed and placed on the infotainment systems themselves. But also what I love too is that the MMI user interface is so easy to use. It's also within arm's reach, but also it's the digital cockpit, which to me, I still think is the best that we have right now in this segment and really across the board in the automotive world. And a lot of it is because the resolution is very high quality, it's easy to read, but also it's not really screaming and shouting in your face. It just seems like it's naturally blended into the dashboard and where the gauge cluster is. It just, to me, it, I feel like Audi ergonomically is more satisfying and more visually appealing. More importantly, however, the Audi A5 Sportback is an all-around compliant and competent sedan where it's going to meet your expectations in more ways than one, but it's not going to exceed them. You're not going to be wowed by the performance necessarily. You're not getting this really quick and dynamic car, but you're also not getting a vehicle that's boring and sedated. It's a nice middle ground if you are looking at buying a luxury car. I personally look at the A5 and A4 as a sedan that is really giving you what the luxury market used to offer maybe 20 years ago, especially from German manufacturers who have kind of moved on and really just focus on technology and giving you performance with a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Whereas Audi's kind of giving you the full package. You get that technology, but it's not overbearing. It's not something that's gonna really override your driving experience. But also it's not leaving more to be desired. When you step away from this car after a long test drive, you don't feel as though that anything was left on the table and that's one of the reasons why I think it is worth paying a little extra for for the A5 Sportback because one of the criticisms is that this car is a bit pricey. But I think even when you're cross shopping it with its sibling, the A4, you're paying for that practicality, you're paying for that sportier look, but also you're paying for a car that I think is a better sedan in the 2020s than the traditional rivals, such as a 3 Series or that A4 or the C300. So in my mind, I think you're gonna love what the A5 is offering for 2023 and the 2024 models, since both are pretty much identical. 2024 will be offering some more standard features, but nothing too different at the end of the day. So I think that the A5 Sportback should definitely be on your list of considerations. And honestly, I think it's a car that really, I think just has it all right now in this market and price range. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, let me know what you think about the Audi A5 Sportback. Is it a winner in this segment? And is it better than the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe? Personally, I love the design of this car. It has a nice understated, classy, and sophisticated aura about it without screaming and shouting at you. But also for the interior, I love the physical buttons and dials that's paired with Audi's MMI user interface and virtual cockpit. But of course, it also comes back to the practicality with that rear hatch. But once again, guys, thank you so much again for watching this review. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.